Okay, so this property is at 46. Uh, I'm representing uh, Christine Yasadis and Jared Ford. I think they're on one of the uh, call ins. Um, this property is located, you know, on the north and uh, the right side of Station Street. And this map that I have up here shows you sort of what it looked like right after the Civil War. <clears throat> and you can see that at that time, the Jellif Mill didn't exist. There was a house there, and uh, there was actually another house um, to the uh, to the I guess to the west of it, which in the nineteen I believe in the nineteen sixties it was moved over to Tainter Drive. The next little house was actually the one that I lived in for twenty years at four sixteen Pequot. And then uh, turning the corner, there's a series of homes. Of which uh, the one we're talking about is the last one, and uh, there was a building um, here. I don't know what it was, but it's not there anymore. So if you can see my cursor, that's the house we're talking about. It was the Bennett House. It was built in 1859 in the Italianate style, <clears throat> and it was built by Jellif and Northrop, I believe, according to the to the guidebook. This is a GIS that shows um, that group of homes. Uh, 416 is where I used to live. Can't get this around the corner is uh, the Proctor's house. Next is Charlotte's, and 46 is us. And this is the uh, GIS showing the um, current garage. And then this is a uh, a Google Earth, you can see the actually the post office parking lot is amazingly close to all of this. <clears throat> the long skinny lot is 416 and the one that goes 90 degrees to it. You can't see the main house because of all the trees. The garage, the existing garage is this structure right here. This is the Huntington survey, the existing condition survey. You can see that the current garage is about 7.8 feet off of the property line. And right now it's squared up with the property line, but not squared up with the house. There's a little patio next to it that connects to some steps and a gravel driveway that runs out to Pequot and two existing piers. <clears throat> the house was uh, extensively um, landscaped by the one of the previous owners, Albert Hadley, who was our neighbor for about 10 years. And I believe he put in this brick wall. Uh, there's actually a big topography change between the road and the sidewalk. It's an embankment. So it's not the same relationship that the sidewalk has with Station Street as you move towards uh, Pequot. As you get in front of the house, you can see there's four or five steps that take you down to the street, and it gets even steeper as you get up to the nor north or I guess west, northwest corner of the property. There's also a beautiful garden. It's all landscaped. Um, there's a brick wall going around the house. The house is kind of a jewel box unto itself. It's got a beautiful <laughs> Italianate style porch. It's got also a screened in porch on the rear. There's a little patio over on this corner here, which actually has a um, an obelisk, which I believe is centered on one of the windows on that elevation. What we're proposing is to build a new garage. We're moving it um, about two feet, a little more than two feet farther away from the property line and closer to the house but we're squaring it up with the house and with the garden. So the garage wall, uh, the northerly garage wall will be squared up with the southerly side of the patio. The driveway gets um, realigned. Uh, th this part of the driveway is not changing, but since the, gr the garage is moving a little bit to the north, we're moving the paving out that way and adding a little bit of an apron here. Uh, it's a gravel driveway. It's going to what we do is going to match that. The um, connection to the house will be by means of those same steps that I described. Um, 
there'll be some stepping stones that go around to a side entrance. <clears throat> there'll also be a door for cars facing the road and a door between the garage and the proposed home office uh, on the first floor. This is the existing garage. And this is the proposed garage. So here's the, this is the uh, Station Street elevation. It's, it's got a hipped roof. Um, the siding is rustic channel siding, which actually is the same kind of siding that is on the garage on at 416 Pequot Avenue which is the building that's closest to this building. If you were to walk out the back of this property, you'd, you'd run right into the garage that's at the rear of 416 Pequot. The trim and the windows and the shutters and the, the doors are all gonna be wood. The siding is wood. The uh, windows and doors will have SDL type construction. There are little brackets on the uh, Eve, we're sensitive to height here, even though this is on actually the topography where the garage is, is at elevation 12. So it's lower than the main house, but we wanted to keep the roof as low as possible. And um, the homeowners are tall, so we ended up, the plate height is only six feet instead of the what might be considered normal of eight feet. Um, on the side facing south, facing north, there's a series of three windows centered, sort of centered on the garden. There's a door on the side where that stepping stone walk was. There's a door into the garage area and another window on this corner. On the south side, there's two windows on the second floor, two windows on the first floor, and on the shed addition or shed wing, we're not proposing any windows. When you go out the back, there's a proposed bluestone patio and a place for a barbecue. This would not be a built-in barbecue. It would just be a freestanding type that you, you buy and you can wheel it around. We're proposing to locate an air conditioning unit here it actually would be a heat pump and to screen it with evergreen um, screening. In the A zone, which is where we are, the accessory setback is four feet. That's what this line is. And the um, side yard setback is 10 feet for uh, detached accessory structures. This is a, a picture showing the front of the house. <clears throat> this is the existing garage, the back of the existing garage. And that's sort of the side, I guess the southerly side, close up of the house when, you know, those, um, I guess it must have been springtime because the plants are out on the patio. And this shows the uh, garden I was describing in the back with the water feature. We're also, part of this application is to um, repair some damage on the house. You can see here's the soffits have rotted. Uh, water has seeped through the eave and gotten into the soffits and they're rotted and we need to repair them. We also want to put on new gutters. Right now there's only one liter on the side of the house um, facing south. We want to add liters. So we're proposing a leader here, new gutter, half round on both the upper and lower roofs. Leader locations on the left side. And uh, this is just a, sh a cut to show the type of construction. These are not the windows or the doors that we're using necessarily, but it shows you the SDL um, type of construction. And then this is the channel rustic siding. This is the uh, half round aluminum gutter. This is the proposed path light. 
uh, it's 17 inches. I think your regs call for 16, but we can cut an inch off of the uh, tube that uh, extends up from the grade. These are the proposed lanterns for the uh, garage. And this is the, uh, this is the type of uh, train uh, condensing unit that we propose. Um, I think that covers everything. Um, you know, we, did, we did see some letters and we know there are people who want to speak and, you know, we fully want to, um, to air all the issues, good, bad, or indifferent to this application so we can digest them. And um, so, you know, I'll wait to hear what the commissioners have to say and, and then the public, and then I'll be prepared to, to answer any questions and also to respond to uh, comments that people make um, at the end. So um, I'll turn that back to you. Matt. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Darren, would you like to start? I don't have any questions. Thanks. Okay, Art. None for me, Adam. Thanks, Art. Jim. Jim, you're on mute. Jim. Jim. Jim, you're muted. Jim, you're muted. How is that? There you go. Give me that. Thanks. Okay. Um, I live across the street. Uh, it's rare that a street is gifted with absolutely superb artistic talent. Very rare. Albert Hadley, the preeminent interior designer of mid 20th century, moved to Station Street from Pocatino Hills around 1985. He took what was known as the Station Master's House and grounds and transformed them into a masterpiece. His low brick retaining walls transformed the front from the front, transformed the front view from the ordinary. Landscapers transplanted enormous trees to the garden at the rear of the property. The two car garage shrank to one car to minimize its distraction. There were few, if any, modifications to the main house. Albert recognized a jewel when one confronted him, and this was a jewel. Many publications, design publications, featured this project all most favorably. We welcome Jarrett and Christine to Station Street and wish them well. They're grateful for their not disturbing the main house and for their care for the trees, which are so important to this property. But we suggest they revisit proposed plan for the garage. The plans show a new garage 50% higher than what's there now, with what looks like far more lighting. This growth will visually pull the structure up and forward towards the street to disturb the existing delicate streets, streetscape massing out of scale with the surroundings and inappropriate. Albert Hadley shrank the garage. He reduced it from one from two cars to one. He lit it with a single unobtrusive downlight painted white to disappear into the white clabbered paint color. Adam, if you could show that photograph, the lamp is barely visible in the photo. He faded the garage into the background, appropriate for the subsidiary structure it is. Fifteen years ago, preservation-motivated neighbors agreed to designate Station Street a Town of Fairfield General Legislation Chapter 88 Scenic Road. It, along with Scenic Road Chester Place across Pequot Avenue, formed the gateway from the train station to Southport Village. Main Street and Southport Harbor, precious icons. It's important to preserve the delicate, small town scenic road character we have. Uh, Adam, if you can share that photograph of the, the garage and Elizabeth's house. Yeah. That would be I'm working on it. Hang on. I just unshared Adam so you can facilitate that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.
Yeah, there it is. If, if you blow this picture up, you can barely see the unobtrusive white light right in the middle of that one car garage door. It just fades in the back. And that's what Albert wanted. He wanted it to disappear. And now the new garage is going to be towering and the lights are going to be far brighter than what Albert had. I don't think it's a good idea and I don't think it's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Jim. Uh, George, comments? Uh, yes, a question on the air conditioning jack, uh, the uh, condenser unit. Uh, uh, could that be moved farther back along the house wall so that it was not as uh, as as effective to the neighbors? Yeah, George, I was I was looking at that and and thinking, you know, the a AC people do not like to run remote um, line sets to air conditioners, but it can be done. Yeah, and in this case, I think it would be much more palatable for everybody if the um, AC units could be located. I guess it would be on the rear of that brick wall, and I don't think it, they'd be visible um, in that location. And I certainly there there's no there's no homes back there. It's just my old garage where I used to live, and right. a couple of red squirrels that live in that pine tree. Yep. So I mean, I think that would be a, a Good suggestion if we can make it happen. I'm thinking of the noise more than the visual impact. Yeah, because it's going to be against the hard wall of the building, which means it's going to be bouncing. The sound bounces and reflects out, even right. with a plan. That would be number one. Number two, I, I think the scale of the building is is a little bit high, um, from from the street. I, I think it is a it, it is a it is a large structure, um, and, and mm. will be a more dominant building on the lot than uh, than than what what's there today that's really my feedback say it george yep i'm done okay thank you rosina comments thank you evan, evan. i have no questions um but do you have by any chance any elevations that show the house and the garage kind of in the streetscape by any chance? I actually, I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> and this wasn't part of my package, but um, I, I did that. And, and I have to say, I don't know if the, the Charlotte house on the right, I drew it from guessing at the height of it just by counting the number of shingles. And I don't know that it's accurate. I think if anything, I erred on the side of making it shorter than it really is. But you can see the relative. I think the topography is accurate with the new garage and the old garage at elevation 12 and the house is where it is up on that. As I said before, you know, a higher elevation relative to Station Street. Thank you. So I guess the what I'm trying to show here is there's there's no way that the garage is not subordinate to the house. It's behind it and it's you know and it's and it's lower. In fact, the eve of the garage is lower than the eve on the front porch. So um you know, I think it's demon demonstrably subordinate to the main house. Less less subordinate th than it was though. <clears throat> well, that, yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. This property, by the way, I, of all the homes that I described on this block, it's it's the largest lot, and it's the only one that is even close to being conforming to the zoning setbacks. The front of the porch is um, the front of the house is about ten inches into the front yard setback. In fairness, you know, the zoning regs didn't exist until 1925. So there was no A zone, there were no setbacks. But this is a, a big property and 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 there's not a lot of structure on it now and there and there won't be. Uh even if this is approved, it's it's gonna be conforming in every way. Everything that we're doing is conforming. 
Well, Jack, um, I mean, this, this uh, streetscape helps a lot in terms of scale of the proposed versus existing. And it, and it isn't that much higher. I think the, um, but, but the massing is bigger. And I think part of that's because of the, the, um, the hipped roof, you know, and how the eave runs around the entire building. So I think you have more wall facing the street as opposed to, let's say, it was a gable end that was lower and dormered, you know? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, the reason we chose the hipped roof is because it's it's less mass yeah. than a gable that went all the way up. But it might be possible to um, put a different roof line on this and, and make the scale appear to be less. Yeah. Also, the pitch of the of the hip is different than the main house. Um, are you tr were you trying to um, sort of take some of the details from the existing house onto the garage? It looks. Yeah, we were, and and you know we we had designed this to have a wood roof. Um, we don't like to put a wood one. roof on on a low pitch. Um, now, since the existing that all happened, we've started pricing wood roofs. So, you know. <laughs> That's another conversation, but yeah, that's was the logic behind the the roof pitch. Okay. Um, okay, I don't have any other questions or comments. Um, um, but I do have um, some letters that have, that I'm going to read into the record. I think I have five or six letters, um, and there's some people here who would like to speak. Um, I think they're, they're in the in the audience. I'm not sure if they want to speak or not. But anyway, first letter is from uh, Judy and Ched Proctor, 428 Pequot Avenue. Uh, dear Adam Clyburn and HCC, it has come to our attention that <clears throat> our new neighbors, Christine Isaitis and Jarrett Ford, wish to construct a new building on their property with plans to be considered by the HCC this Thursday. Though so slated as a home office and gym, the plans call for two baths and a sink and what looks like a kitchen island. We are concerned that the space will be used for cooking and sleeping, which are not allowed in the residential zone A, they could therefore serve as an illegal family apartment, rental apartment, or Airbnb. In addition, the mass of the building, about 1,170 square feet garage included, will loom over both our neighbor's property and ours. <clears throat> could the building simply be placed on the other side of the property, affording the Yesedas Ford's and else privacy. Alternatively, office space and a home gym could be added to the main house. Sorry, did someone say something? Yeah. Um, thanks so much for your consideration of solutions that will maintain the integrity of our South Fork properties. Best Judy and Chad Proctor. <clears throat> the next letter is from Elizabeth Charlotte, 28 Station Street. To the Historic District Commission has come to my attention that plans have been submitted for significant construction on the property at 46 Station Street, adjacent to mine at 28 Station Street. I would like to voice my concerns as to how those two, those alterations or those I'm aware of could affect my privacy and quality of life. Number one, I have a small garden behind my house. The height of a large two-story building seemingly very close to my fence will loom over the small outdoor space and diminish a significant source of light and air. In addition, it seems to have windows on the second story that will look directly into my bedroom windows. Number two, there's a large AC unit proposed adjacent to my fence. I'm well aware that the sound and vibrations from such a unit would be intrusion on the peace and quiet of my backyard. Number three, the current garage doesn't have running water that I'm aware of, but the two baths, sit kitchen and shower that show in the plan are on high ground, elevated above my property. I'm concerned that runoff or flooding or sewage could easily make its way to my property. That in addition to runoff from the larger planned roof. I realize one is not guaranteed privacy or quiet beyond one's own property, but in this case, if the building were on the other side or behind the house, it will not impact 
a neighbor or this way. Thank you for hearing my concerns. Anyone on the committee is welcome to visit my property to see the person, how this new building would affect me. Sincerely, Elizabeth Charlotte, 28 Station Street. <clears throat> Uh, the next letter is from Cassandra Crump, previous owner of 46 Station Street. Dear commissioners, I'm writing as the previous owner of 46 Station Street. Up until December, I faithfully preserved Albert Hadley's vision for the property for 22 years and he for the 14 years before me. Albert and I were friends bound by a shared passion for the property. I entrust, he entrusted me with what I consider to be his legacy piece. Somewhere along the line, I had thought to enclose the screen porch of the main house. The plan was to discuss the idea with Albert over lunch in New York. However, he was so visibly shaken that I immediately changed the subject to ordering dessert and never broached the idea of change to the property again. Like Albert, I've been very fortunate to find a buyer with a similar sensitivity to the property. Jared Ford and fiance Christine have been warmly welcomed by their Station Street neighbors as a result. It was extremely hard for, for me to part with the property, but cancer intervened at a time when I needed the energy to start making general restorations to the property. The new owners can easily carry the baton for years to come, and I can let go of the role entrusted to me. As many of you know, this much-loved property has been photographed by magazines around the world it's one of the gems of Southport and the pride of Station Street as part of the Connecticut State Scenic Road designation. Discussions surrounding changes to the property will always be char charged. I only wish Albert were here to guide us right now. He would know just how to, to tie in Jared and Christine's needs with the right aesthetic. And the first to admit that the property needs a new garage. The existing structure is rotted from runoff from the upper garden and to be clear, I'm not opposed to a site expansion of the garage to accommodate an office studio if we're in keeping with Albert's original understudy aesthetic. I'm opposed to the proposed shed-like studio, however, as it mimics the main house too closely and covers Albert's sketching garden at the rear of the garage where he produced many sketches for friends in the village. It will also be quite visible from the public on three sides of the property. You may have noticed that there are errors on the plans which should be corrected and brought back to the commission in order for the public to fully appreciate the proposed changes that will be made to the overall design in the driveway, gardens and garage. I can't emphasize enough the need to look at the property as a whole and understand that its beauty is the sum of its carefully curated parts. Fiddling with the existing design elements will lead to a mashup that may work functionally, but will ruin the design aesthetic that has, met, that has many admirers. Specific comments on 46 Station Street application for appropriate number one, my starting point, the existing garage does not compete with the structural beauty of the main house. Number two, the garage presents more or less like a second home on the property. Number three, perhaps not relevant but to you, but the square footage as drawn will approximate that of the main house. The true size of the main house is 30 by 30 on two floors or 1,800 square feet plus the screen porch at the rear of the house. Number four, shed-like studio in the rear of the, of the proposed garage mimics the screen porch at the back of the main house. Two bump outs is one too many. Note the studio bump out will be visible to the public. Number five, roof line mimics the house rather than having its own character. Number six, front window of the proposed garage takes away from the simplicity of Albert's work. Number seven, we'd like to see the understated flat panel garage door and the barn lights used by Albert retained to keep his aesthetic from the side street. Number eight, ch channel rustic siding may not look great at an increased height. I would like, I would walk the village to compare. Number nine, missing information on the plans that would be helpful to access appropriateness. Main house dimensions, actual height to the peak of the garage roof, not just to the sill plate, the actual dimension of the existing driveway, actual dimensions of the proposed driveway, and dimensions of the overhead door. Is the garage intended to be a single car garage? <clears throat> Number 10, note roofing materials on the print is inconsistent with materials list. Drawings show cedar shingles, and materials list shows asphalt shingles to main, match main roof house. Number 11, note cut sheet shows six slash one, oh, six over one windows. Drawing shows six over six. 
The main house has six over six windows. Cut sheet shows a casement window, but is not seen on the drawings, nor would it be appropriate if used. Number 12, owners should provide a written description of the trees, shrubs, and walls that are proposed to be eliminated by changes to the driveway. These are a big part of the design element of the property. It is my hope that a compromise can be struck that more or less meets the needs of both the applicant and the neighborhood. I would ask that modifications be brought back to the HUC for consideration with sufficient notification for outside comments. Sincerely, Cassandra Clinton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next letter is from Peter Novins, and this is the email. And then there's another letter attached. Uh, Chairman Clavern, Commissioners, my wife and I own the property at 416. Pequot Avenue, which abuts 46 Jason Street. We have reviewed the basic drawings provided to the Historic District Commission. The drawings show they propose making significant changes to not just the scale of what exists, but to the character of the neighborhood. Enlarging and adding a second story to the existing garage will be completely out of character with the surrounding properties. It would create a looming presence visible from many homes in the neighborhood. This is inconsistent with maintaining historic authenticity. We're strongly opposed to the HTC approval, the requested certificate of appropriateness. I have attached a letter providing additional information about the impact. To be unequivocally clear, the proposed changes are not appropriate and should not be approved. Peter and Joanna Novins. And this is their additional letter, Chairman Clyburn Commissioner. We own a property at 416 Pequot Avenue, which abuts the property at 46 Station Street. We were never Notified of any proposed changes to that property, I just obtained a copy of the application certificate of appropriateness filed with the commission. The proposal in that application will directly and negatively impact my property. It is also inconsistent with other properties in the neighborhood as well as out of proportion to the house. We strongly oppose the commission approving this application. The proposed two-story multi-use building is radically different from the rest of the neighborhood and is not consistent with other stru such structures in the neighborhood. It will be jarring in contrast to the overall area consistency. The plans attached to the application show a structure not only nearly as big in footprint as the main house, but double in the height of the existing garage. It will effectively appear to be a second home on a single lot. Despite the applicant's claim that it is a studio slash gym, it includes features that effectively make it an apartment. The property at 46 Station Street abuts the side of our backyard, the existing one-story structure is already very visible from the yard year-round. The proposed building will not only be approximately twice the height, but also move much closer to the property line. The result will be a structure looming over our yard, blocking views, limiting sunlight, and eliminating any sense of privacy. It will be significantly and permanently diminish our ability to enjoy our own property. The entire community works hard to preserve the historic feel of Southport this proposal undermines that effort. We oppose the approval of the proposed new garage structure in the strongest possible terms. Joanna and Peter Novitz. And the last letter is from Sasquanog. Um, hi, Adam. Apologies for the 12th hour submission for your 3 p.m. meeting today. Reason application from the new owners of 46 Station Street. The Saskatoon Association shares concerns to be expressed at the hearing this afternoon. The proposed garage changes are inappropriate for the property, especially but not exclusively because of its connection to Albert Hadley. The present garage recedes into the background and goes largely unnoticed. Its proposed replacement has the opposite elements. The proposed garage height and massing are inappropriate to the Italian 8 house and an affront to its history is a comment we received and agree with. We also agree with the support the former owner's comments has already submitted to the HEC via email on April 8th. Thank you for your attention to this input, Jack Imes, Saskatchewan Association. Did not receive any letters um, in favor of this application. Um, and I think there are some people in the audience who may want to speak. Um, Please identify yourself if you'd like to um, say a few comments. You Adam, have to Jim, unmute yourself one, and be one, heard. In, in, in answer to uh, the discussion of the roof line on the garage, looking at the pictures, that's it's an interesting comparison showing 
Elizabeth's house at the hey, garage. Jim? Yes. This is this isn't really the time uh for comments. Okay. I'll ask at the end if you want to make some ask some other things you want to say. Um I, I, right now I'm I, looking for anyone from the audience who would like to speak out on this project. Okay. This application. Okay. So you sit tight. Um Okay, so I am, I'm not hearing that anyone wants to speak out. If you do want to speak out, please um, unmute yourself and say so, or raise your hand, do something to let me know. Okay. Having heard none. Um, Jack, would you like to make any comments to the letters? Yeah, absolutely. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, <clears throat> basically, I think, uh, I agree that the uh, existing garage is is modest, but it's it's kind of I think unfair to say that it's should su suffice for the new owners. Um, I think I knew Albert as well as most of you in the audience did, and he was he was living there by himself. He actually was a person of modest taste, and he didn't have more than he always had just one car. Um, you know, I, when I lived at 416 Pequot, we built an addition. We had two kids and we built an addition that was almost as big as the main house. Uh, some of the neighbors on that block put large additions on. And uh, and there were people at that time who didn't think it was a good idea. But um, uh, we're sensitive to the window location. We're sensitive to the AC unit. We're sensitive to the type of roof that we put on this building, but to say that uh, having this building and, and the relative size of it on this property is inappropriate, I think is is not being fair or, or totally um, um, accurate. Um, there's, there's no issue with zoning. This was all approved. It's all been stamped by Matt Decker. You know, there are many buildings in Southport that have home offices or gyms or artist studios or whatever you might say they are. They're all very, very similar throughout the town. Um, this is on city sewer. There's no septic. The town now requires you to put in uh, subsurface drainage and we are adding some roof that shed in the back as additional roof area. Um, so there will be increased impervious surfaces. Uh, that will all be taken into account at the time. Once we get approved, we'll have to go to the um, engineering department. We'll hire a professional engineer to design on site retention for the water. Um, the, um, the part of the prop, the part of the addition or the part of the garage that's closest to 416 Pequot is the 1 story part. So, um. You know, I, I used to live there. There was a big uh, stockade fence. I could see Albert's garage. It never bothered me, neither the stockade fence nor the nor the fact that I could see his garage. Um, I think that um, you know we'll get we'll regroup with with Christine and Jarrett and and try to digest all of these comments. Um, the one thing I would say, it's it's not practical to add anything on the north side of the property. If you're familiar with the property, there's a very, very large shade tree on the left side of the house. Uh, if you look at the rendering that I have on the screen, that's not it. It's it's more like the one that I'm showing on the right. There's a humongous, I think it's an oak tree, but I could be wrong on, on that side. Also, that's where Albert's obelisk is. And it's also a big steep incline to get up onto that side. There's also less room there. There's only about 40 feet to play with on the, on that northerly side of the house. So we think that where we have the garage is the right place for it. And that's where it always has been. And that's where um, the grading is easiest. Um, I think that's about it. We would like you to vote on the um, on the main house repairs, the gutters, and leaders. And what we would suggest is that you deny without prejudice the garage portion. Um, uh, 
anything connected with the garage, the lighting, the sidewalks, the driveway, whatever the AC unit, you know, so we can go back and digest all the comments and, and um, come back to you with something that um, addresses those comments. And I think that wraps it up for me, Adam. Okay, thanks, Jack. Uh, Jim, did you have any more want to make another comment? You're, you're muted. You're muted, Jim. Jim. Uh, the the roof okay. of the main house looks far shallower than the roof of the garage. Is there any way of replicating that profile on the garage? That might bring it down some. Yeah, yes, there is, but I, I, I'd like to explore what Adam suggested also, which is uh, and, and a lower also, table if, with, the, with the shed roof. If there could be an overhang on that lowered roof line, that might bring it down further. You know what I mean? Like to replicate the overhang on the main house. So a, a more extensive overhang. That's all. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, I get it. Yeah. May I speak? Can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry, who is this? Uh, this is Elizabeth Charlotte, the next door neighbor. Okay, can do you, you hear do me? You make us yes. I, I, I want to clarify one thing. Um, uh, thank you very much for reading my letter. Uh, I had uh, sent an, uh, a PS, an addendum, after I sent the letter because I realized that, um, well, I will say that Mr. Franzen's drawings don't entirely show the scale or the context in relation to, to my house next door. Um, um, Mr. Franzen, you said that the garage is subordinate to the house, but it's not really subordinate to my house. The drawing that's on the screen right now shows um, 46 and the garage and my house all on the same plane. And in fact, the garage, as we know, is set much further back. And where it is set, it is uh, abutting my garden, which I would like to point out is on a much lower elevation than the elevation of the, pro the 46 station property. So the two-story building that would go up there would be in effect, nearly three stories as it looks over my, the, the equivalent size of nearly three stories as it looks over my garden, which is perhaps several feet lower than the bottom of that, the current garage. I just feel that it's important to clarify that because in the drawings, it looks like everything's on the same plane and my garden behind my house is considerably lower than uh, the, my house, my house itself. Can I, can so, I comment on that, Adam? Yes, of course. Yeah. So I don't have the topography for the, um, for the Charlotte property, <clears throat> but it, it looked to me like the 12 foot contour ran into that property, um, at some point near the rear of the house. <clears throat> but if I could gain access to the property and, measure the siding on it and um, of course you know i i could draw something that's more representative of what's going on having said of that of course i you're you are welcome to to do that because i realized that uh when i saw the drawings that it there it was not taking into consideration the difference in the elevation from my garden to yes. the top of uh, you know and i'm i also as you saw commented on the second floor windows looking right into my bedroom windows on my second floor so yes and i don't think those windows that it might be possible to either move them or remove them or put them in different spots so that's less of an no. issue i would be very grateful if you would come and look at my property yeah my my measurements were from just counting shingles so i i apologize and guessing but i think I think the street elevations are, are pretty accurate. I, I agree the back, I have no idea what's going on back there. 
because I didn't have access to the topo. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, do any of the other commissioners have any other comments this time? Okay. And um, okay, so no one else wants to speak. And so the, Adam, uh, just, just, closed. I'm sorry. Just go to, ahead. Yeah, just to reiterate, if you could act on the main house gutters and yeah, leaders yeah, exactly. repair. Um, I know I've taken too much of your time already, but that would be great because we do need to get that taken care of. Understood. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. So the hearing um, is closed. Adam, I just have a, a quick. I'm sorry, who's this? Uh, this is Peter Novins. Uh, I own the property at 416 Pequot, just behind uh, the, uh, the property under consideration. I just want to okay. make did you, I'm yeah. sorry, did you, did you hear me when I asked for people to speak? I did, yes. I've, I, I've been waiting for, and, and I, I, I just closed the, okay. the, the hearing. I will hold my peace. Sorry. Okay, next item on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> Jay Krushkin and Warren Marcus, 155 Rose Hill Road in Southport. For property located at 155 Rose Hill in Southport to a redesign driveway. B remove existing stone wall, new stone wall. C new handrails. E whitewash existing brick and E new site lighting. Is there someone here to represent 155 Rose Hill? Yes, Adam, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, this is Jay Grushkin. Um, nice to meet you in person virtually, Adam, and appreciate the time of the commission this evening. Uh, with me is my wife, Lauren Marcus, and also uh, uh, joining me is Chris Palmer from Outdoor Design, who uh, if and when I misstate what we're up to will correct me and elaborate. Um, uh, so my uh, my wife and I purchased uh, 155 Rose Hill Road in Southport um, uh, recently. Uh, delighted to be part of the neighborhood. Our house is let me make sure. Um, uh, this works okay. So um, our house is um, a uh, colonial that, after extensive research at the uh, Historic Commission um, and a lot of uh, inconsistent data. I believe it was originally built uh, in the late 1840s or early 1850s. Uh, it apparently was um, uh, damaged severely. I'm sorry, Jay. Yes. Jay, can you can do you have drawings that you can show the commission? Yeah, uh, I thought I was sharing it. Are you not, you're not seeing that? Oh no, no, we don't see we don't see it. Okay, let me. Sometimes you have to open it and then and then and then uh, navigate to actually find the file. Okay, so let me try again here. Make sure. Okay, so share. It says we can't display your shared content. Make sure that you've allowed permission to share content. Um, Jay, do you want me to try to share it? I'll try. Uh, yes, if you could, Lauren. I'm not sure why you would need permission. I don't know how to give you permission. Lauren, are you able to do that? I'm trying as well. Okay. I can also pull it up if you like. Yeah, just give them one second. I'm I haven't had this problem before with. It 
says it is connecting. Re-enter the meeting, it looks like. I'm going to try it now. Oh, here we go. I'm going to do this exactly. Uh, here we go. Do you see that? Do you see that? What's up there now? Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry for the delay there. Okay. So, no, uh, no yeah. So this house, um, again, uh, was originally uh, built uh, late 1840s, early 1850s. Apparently, uh, much of it was destroyed in a fire uh, that occurred at the church at uh, 137, uh, at the property that is currently 137 Rose Hill Road. Uh, it was rebuilt and then it was uh, remodeled um, in the around 1920 uh, into its current configuration uh, and it appears based on photos that I saw from uh, I think 1909 that it was completely remodeled. Um, what we are proposing here is um, uh, to we we currently have an asphalt driveway which is extremely narrow leading to a two car garage um, uh, it, it's it's so narrow that uh, a mini cooper it's very difficult to maneuver it in uh, reverse to get out of the driveway we're proposing to uh, take the existing driveway and um, expand it out uh, along the uh, the lines of these blue arrows such that we will be able to back uh, our car out of the garage, turn it around and come out uh, front forward, um, which would be um, much easier for us to navigate and also much safer as there's an incredible amount of foot traffic uh, on our sidewalk and in the street in front of us uh, and joggers, it'll be much safer um, for us to see what's going on as we pull out. Uh, we currently have an asphalt driveway. Uh, we may uh, convert it to an oil and stone uh, driveway, um, but that is um, that is the extent. So again, the existing driveway would be extended out toward the house. Um, and curve down as opposed to just being um, kind of straight out at an angle. Um, and uh, that is the driveway redesign. As part of that, there is an existing stone wall that runs, that abuts the garage and runs down along uh, the early perimeter of the driveway leading from the garage. I believe I have a picture of it here. Okay, so you can see this uh, stone wall. Um, as part of the driveway expansion, we would essentially take this wall down, uh, move it back um, along the extended portion of the driveway and then run a connection of that same wall uh, toward the toward the front of the house. Okay, it would be the uh, uh, this same type of um, of stone uh, used for that process. Okay. Um, then continuing on, uh, we are proposing uh, for safety reasons to. Uh, install uh, handrails along part of our walkway um, leading up to the house and then leading up to a covered porch. Uh, also uh, handrails in uh, the back leading the stairwell on the stairway, uh, stairway up to the rear entrance of the house and the same on both sides of the front steps uh, leading to the front door of the house. The, um, the handrails uh, would be a long, would look uh, basically like what we have here in this picture. Um, six foot of railing for each side of the front steps, uh, 12 foot total for the front, no pickets, uh, slimline design with one and a half inch posts. Um, and there would be 12 feet of slimline forged railing for the rear steps coming down from the deck, no pickets. So uh, those are the 
hand railings that we propose, uh, then uh, we would propose to um, whitewash. We have um, the front walkway uh, from the sidewalk up to the house uh, is slate with um, uh, red brick uh, uh, underneath it. Uh, we were the red brick is a little bit ugly. We were proposed to whitewash that to match the lower part of um, of our chimney. Uh, look, basically that that level of whitewashing. And then finally, uh, we would be proposing to add <coughs> uh, lighting. Uh, along the path and a little bit of uh, wash and bullet lighting. Uh, Chris, uh, can you chime in to what we're proposing to do here with lighting? Yes, I can. How are you? Thanks, everybody, for this time. Yeah, we're just doing some incidental lighting or um, accent lighting along the steps in the front there and just uplighting a couple of the plant material over there. And that was really the extent of the lighting there. It looks like a elaborate plan here, but most, a lot of this stuff is ex existing on the property already. And the, um, I don't know, Chris, whether you want to um, explain the, the lighting at all. The, the, the lip lights, the lip lights gonna be in the, in the step there like that. And all these, well, there are three Watts, you know, so it's nothing really, you know, nothing taller than, I think it's a 16 inch requirement or 14 inch requirement um, that you guys require for that stuff down that way. And um, that's really kind of it. And just, you know, I don't think anything's going to, you know, go over a 40 or 60 watt, you know, for the whole entire piece of property there. And we'll be willing to work with you guys on anything just to get a little bit of lighting to, especially to illuminate the back steps in the back. Cause it's, they got a big giant beach tree in the back and it's, and it's unfortunately on the Northern side and it's just really dark back there. And we were just trying to illuminate the space for them to walk from the garage up. Cause there's, I think there's maybe eight to 10 steps to get up there as you can see in the grade. And then, um, thanks Chris. And then finally, um, the, uh, the, the white picket fence that runs the perimeter of the property is in need of, uh, of some basic uh, repair, uh, need to fix the, uh, the front gate, which doesn't open. And that would all be in uh, keeping with the uh, exact design uh, of uh, fencing that we currently have. Um, and that is the extent of the, uh, of the work that we propose for the property happy to answer any questions thanks jay i i don't think uh the the fence isn't a part of the application because it's a repair oh it's a re yeah i wasn't sure yeah, whether just, you, yeah whether it's you just a repair I I could just to repair. check uh and hang on um yeah and it's on, i have it on my repair list so you've, you've already submitted a repair for that so that we don't have to consider the, the fence um, but everything else is on the application okay um Art, mm -hmm. do you have any questions Not an Adam. Okay, thanks, Art. And Jim. No questions. Thank you. George. Yes. Can I just get a little more detail on the lighting plan? Uh, how many lights? I I don't see them marked on the plans. Maybe I can't see it in your drawing. They were. Let me uh, let me bring those up again. See if let I me see if I can see where they are located. Uh, let's see. We weren't changing anything in the front, no, no lighting in the front steps there. It's basically along the perimeter over here. You can see the little, if we can, if right. Jay can see, blow it up just a smidge more. It's really the lighting's over here on this, right where the walk comes from the driveway. You can see the little red dots, the blue dots underneath the um, big beech tree in the back, 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 that back corner back there. And along the garage in the back to illuminate that little patio space in the backyard. But I, I don't think we really have much going on in the front because we know that we know how that it works down there with the historic commission down there. Okay, so I get the I get the, I just like a like a number. If you could just give me how many walkway lights, and then 
it looks like you've got some spots or up lights. Yes. Bloods, what, how many and where? I have, I think, I, I'm just seeing, Jay, can you blow that up a little bit, Jay? Yep. Okay, and scroll down a little bit. So you can see the red dots there. So we got one, two, three, four, five in the back. And then I have one, let's see, one, two, three, four along, five along the back walk to the driveway and along the garage. And then Jay, go to the front, front landscape there. And then I have one underneath the left-hand side tree, one on the left-hand side of the property line. So that's two, four, six, six in the front. Okay. And uh, where are the spots? The spots are, would be underneath the, the tree. That's, that's, those are called the little well lights. And they're three watt lights that just uplight the tree. Okay, would you go back and show me the, the light, the fixtures you're recommending? Yes. Oh. These those are those are path lights. These are the little these are the little niche lights that we and these are the these are the lights, the wash lights. That looks like a spotlight to me. Or... It, it it it's the it's the path light. See how it's lit with the um, boxwoods over there. It illuminates. That's one of the path lights we were hoping to use over there. And those are fourteen or fifteen inches high. Yes. And the light would be shining more or less down. Yes, and you can see the two and a half to four four watts on those. Yep, I get it. I just just like to be clear. To be clear. Totally, I get it. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, you answered my question. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, sir. Rosina. Um, you mentioned that you might be using oil and stone or asphalt. Um, is there any possibility that you can decide which one it is so that? Um, it's kind of easier for us or you're just um, well what i would what i would ask is we would either leave the, the existing asphalt that's there but we we would like uh authority to put in the the oil and stone if if um if that works for the commission which we're we're trying to analyze um uh what the exact cost would be and to make sure that it's a surface that would make sense during foul weather because we don't want something uh, that is, um, you know, has any stones that would come and pick up and go onto the lawn or into the street. Okay, understood. Um, and then mm -hmm. clarifying about the light fixtures, I see that there were nine on the back, six on the front, um, some on the trees. Where are the um, step lights? Right. Step lights, we weren't doing any, the step lights were, we, were, it's, as we had it on the plan here, but there's no step lights in here because the exist, masonry is existing. If I were going to put one of those down light step lights, it would be in the new portion of the wall that we're moving with the wall there in the two steps to where the driveway meets. But I'm not taking up the, I'm not taking up the existing treads and that there, there's only towards it. If I'm going to do it, it would be just where the, the driveway entrance up to the wall, up to the back. And so that means one. that for the application, you're just um, asking for two different type of lights, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then in terms of the white watch, um, I kind of don't like um, painting the brick. However, the location that you guys are proposing is fairly minimal and it's not in the structure itself. So um, that answered my question about the white wash. Um, thank you. Thank you, Zena. Darren? Everybody asked all my questions. I was most concerned about the whitewashing of the brick, um, but I think that's been asked and answered. All right. Thank you. Um, I, I do have um, comments on the lighting. Um, I mean, I, if, if you look in our, our handbook, um, up lighting, is is basically um, inappropriate, um, and I feel like you have uh, quite a bit of upwinding in the backyard, right? Yes. 
Like, if it's inappropriate, like, we, just, like, the, the, we could just right? take it out of the plan. <laughs> yeah, well, it's tricky because, you know, we, we can't go through, like, I think, I think because of the, um, I mean, I guess we can make a stipulation to, to remove all the uh, uplighting, which is the uplighting, the wa what it's designated as wash lighting. It's, it, it would be basically where the, where the trees are, the bigger, the bigger plant material. It, that's where no, it is. I, I understand, but I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at your plan to see and the, I see, um, you know, they're, they're, they're the wash keys, you're keying, you're keying in path lights, you're keying in wash lights, and you're keying yeah. in ML16 so so bullet the blue, lights. The blue dots are the wash lights, and that's where the, that's where the uplighting would be. And what about the purple dots? Purple dots are the little bullet lights that are going to go in the um the, the step. That's what we're going to use. Yeah, I, yeah, Adam. I hope you're not confusing. Uh, Some of these are are plants. That, um, no, 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 no. I, I no. I'm, oh, he's I'm not. Looking, I have, no, I, I see. I have, I, it's, using, pretty, it's pretty. The three clear lights on the. What, yeah. It's it's the and three lights it, on I the side. Like, sorry. Go ahead. It's the three lights that we're using on the side, a path light, a wash light, and a, a bullet light. The bullet lights are in the steps. Unfortunately, we showed up, up in the picture there, there's a lip light. We're not using a lip light there. We're using bullet lights okay, in the steps. Well, here, I guess here, here's my confusion because, like, for instance, the, um, you know, the big tree in the back in yes. between the garage and the main house yes. shows two, two fixtures, right? But, and those are uh, bullet lights according to your key. Yes, I'm so I'm not sure how that can be if those are supposed to be in the steps. Um, no, the all the bullet light it's a it's a tiny little light. It's about an inch big that sits I, goes I know, inside, but and it's got a hood on plan, it. Yes, I understand. If you look at your plan, you're you're keying in the bullet lights under the tree. Yes, it, it's a, it's clearly a, a mistake. Um, you know, obviously. And yep. then up in front, underneath the existing dogwood, you have one. Yes. And then over by the and at the other existing dogwood on the left. Yep. And then it looks like you have a couple of path lights in the front left lawn. Front left lawn. Jay, sc scroll, scroll yep. so you can see the front lawn up there. There's a hydrangea tree with an uplight. And then yes. in front of it and behind it, you got you have path lights. Yes. Yeah. So I think this is for me anyway. I, I think um, you have too much light, and definitely mm -hmm. too, there's the up lighting's got to go. And then you have two up in the front front right. Uh, what kind of tree is that? It's an existing something. Yeah. Um, so, so I can I make that. Have, I... I mean, how do we go about making those modifications for you guys? Well, I, it, there's too much to, um, I think, work with here. I, I mean, I, we can't go through the, the plan and, and say, you know, the stipulation to remove this, this, and this and go through each fixture. Yeah. Um, so I think it might have to be denied without prejudice and you might have to come back with another lighting plan. Is, or is do I just thinking. take the lighting out altogether and we don't do any lighting? Well, I mean, we can we can just deny it without prejudice. Um, but you know, the, we'll, we'll have the discussion when we go into executive session as to how how we want to approach this. Um, so you can take the lighting okay. out of the. Well, we don't want we don't want the lighting to hold up the, the, the obviously the. No, it, piece. it won't. We the can make, the I mean, because we we can improve we can improve you know line items like individual yeah. items like the driveway, okay, that's stone not, wall, that's the We we can address those issues and then just deny the lighting. That's without spectacular. prejudice, and you you can come back and and um. This is and, great. Uh, this is know, both, This is all our first rodeo with this. <laughs> right, and, and, I know if you and, consult and, the if you consult the handbook, it would be helpful on on lighting. I think it's pretty pretty clear. You know what we what we right. find appropriate. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and Adam, for what it's worth, and it probably isn't worth much. Um, what we are proposing, uh, in terms of very light uplighting, uh, mainly on a magnolia tree, uh, seems to be uh, much more modest than most of the neighborhood in terms of lighting. In terms of uplighting? Yeah. Um, but I- You're referring to the but house I'm, that was just renovated down the street from you? The, the, yeah, uh, you know, and- uh, Well, and that's, that's, they've already been in front of us and all that lighting that she put in has to come out. Okay. 
just here, you know. All right, no, no, that's um, fine. No, we we, we want to play by, we want to play by the rules. So understood. Yeah, and we hold everyone at the same, you know, same level yep. of accountability here. We're not we're not trying to pick on you, you know. We treat everyone the same way. No, I know. Get it. Um, okay. So and, you and there are, and there are just so you know that you know there some uplighting has creeped into the into the. Um, the districts without our knowledge, and you know, so it's really difficult to police it. Um, and some stuff has been been there for 20 years, you know. Yeah. Um, and and unless it comes to our attention, there's really nothing we can do about it. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not bringing it to your attention, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're happy to come back separately on on lighting. Um, sure. It's the fluff. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, any other? Questions or comments from the commission? Okay, hearing none. Um, I didn't receive any uh, letters in favor of this application. I didn't receive any letters opposing this application. Um, and I should ask if there's anyone in the audience who cares to speak in favor of the application. Please make yourself heard. No. And is there anyone here who would like to speak against the application? No. Okay. Then the hearing's closed. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. I'm Lauren. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Dan and Carrie Wilson, 14 Willow Street in Southport for property located at 14 Willow Street in Southport. For A, a new 14 by 33 in-ground pool. B, pool decking. C, pool fence. And D, outdoor kitchen. Someone here to represent 14 Willow Street. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Adam. It's Lulu at Marquee Pools. We're representing the uh, Wilsons today, along with Chris Palmer, also, who's helping us with this project. Um, we have, okay. in addition, our in ground pool. We're working with Chris on the rest of the of the backyard. So I'm going to try and share as well. I don't. Uh, my technical skills are not not uh, that great either, but if I pull up files, can I drag and drop? Is that how that works? So you have to go to, if you open it up on your computer, with the, the yeah. file, and then come back to um, WebEx, on the bottom of your yep. screen, there's a share button, and you yep, click, click share, that. and then, you, then, and then you find, you'll find it, uh, just locate your file and open it up. Okay. Share file. There we go. Let's see. Um, Oh, let's say this is um, well, oh, I'm getting there. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to start with the, the it's, survey. You don't see it yet. It's not up on the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm get, uh, yes, let's see. It's uh, it's loading. I hope. There you go. Okay. Of course. It's so. Uh, okay. So this is the existing house, the walkway from Willow Street. This pool is really going in behind the driveway and garage that's off of Westway. So it's really sort of more in the back side yard. Um, we have it here. This is existing patio is here. Um, I'm going to pan this off to Chris and after we talk pool part, but um, right now it just has, we're proposing this patio around it here to meet up with patio that Chris is also doing 
with regard to the kitchen. We have the proposed pool equipment pack there, um, which is meeting meeting all the zoning. It's setbacks. meeting the zoning setbacks from the side and the and the street. Um, and really, that's you know, it's tying in with other patio existing patio here, but it's um, this doesn't show some of the landscaping. I'm going to leave that to Chris, but we're going to be coming in from the driveway here. Um, this this is landscaped with a gate and a fence, and the fence is going to be coming around from the garage around the entire property. There is an existing fence here that you'll see photos of. I believe Chris is just replicating what's across the street, which is already approved in the historic district. Um, right, now the, right now, the fencing does not meet pool code. So there, we, we're just going to replicate. We took some pictures of what's across the street to show you guys that that's what the plan is for Tony Anastasia to do the fencing over on the perimeter of the property here. And then they're recommending some chain link fence to go along the, um, the neighbor's um, side on the, um, on the west way side. And then uh, obviously it's heavily planted there on the neighbors and we're going to heavily plant on, on our side of the fencing there. But the rest is all going to be along the perimeter property is going to be that fencing that the neighbor has. That's because that meets pool code. So I have um, a same sort of similar presentation that the previous um, homeowners at Rose Hill showed that that was done by outdoor design. Um, I'm going to pull that up. And maybe go through have Chris go through it with me. So this is the front of the house. Um, is it? Let's see. Is it too Can big for see? everybody? To see? It is too big for us all for me to see. Anyways, here. Okay. Oh, it's it's coming up as as portrait when it's really a landscape. Let's see. Um, well, let's see, I, let's see how it comes out. Um, so this is a picture of the fence that, that I guess is across the street on the property across the street that we're going to replicate. Yes. It's going to meet the road that's 48 inches high. I don't know, Chris. Chris yes. Can planting. you scroll? Can you can you scroll up on that so I can see the fencing? So I can, yep. Scroll up a little so I can see it's it's on the bottom of the page. Like, it's um, a this, clunky. I don't know. If I zoom in like that, does that help? No. Chris, I don't know if it I'm, helps you, but on my screen, there's a plus or minus just above where she's sharing. So I can zoom in and zoom out as I need. Fabulous, I guys. Do you have that? No, I'm, I, I'm so unfamiliar with this stuff over here, but I just. <laughs> it's, it's just above the okay. page. Okay. You, you guys can probably bring it up and we can go through it with all you, the, the commission here, just like the gentleman did it with um, Mr. Franzen. Oh, actually, yeah, Jack, no, Jack's no, presentation no, 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 was amazing. That. Thank you, Adam. How about if I pull it? How if I pull it up? You see that? I can definitely see that. Yeah. Just keep going through. Yeah. Well, now I can see that. Yes, I can see everything now. Yep. That's the that's the existing fencing. Right there. That's existing fencing. It doesn't meet pool code. Across the street, that the vinyl coating is going along the um, the perimeter of the prop, the one perimeter of the property along the back end of the pool, just so it blends in with the um, the landscape. There's the fencing across the street, trying to mimic that exactly. The chain link is on the right hand side. It'll be heavily, that's not the, obviously that's not the picture of the house, but it's heavily landscaped on the neighbor's side and we'll be heavily landscaping on our side. Trying to mimic the material down there. 
this is basically a New England veneer, which is what the kitchen's going to look like. About about the same size kitchen too. It's about twelve feet, thirty six inches tall. Lighting again, which is something we may. I'm, I'm going to have to look in my book so before that. So that, that that perfect word about prejudice was perfect on that. Give us grace on that, and I'll figure that out when we re, we readdress that at that t- point in time. But this is the proposed plan that we um, we came up with. You can see on the right hand side where the right hand side where the house is. There's an existing patio there, and this client asked for us that hey, we want to put a pool in, and we thought this was the best location, you know, to kind of tie it in with the garage area space. And in doing so, it's going to require a couple steps to get down to this pool area, We're trying to minimize the you know the keep the yard to the integrity. That's kind of trying to keep everything kind of in line with the existing patio that's up top on the, on the right-hand side of this plan. You can see the kitchen in color code there. This is the 3D this is the 3D renderings of what the, what we're proposing here. And right, again based on based on what you guys tell us we'll We'll modify whatever you know we we need to do to modify. We we modify. Just this is all new to me. <laughs> so excuse me, can I step in, Chris? Yes, for sure. Hey, this is uh Jim, the owner of Marquee Pools. And so I think something that's important to keep in mind is that the elevation of the pool now is set at elevation 10, as you'd see it on the survey is very close to the driveway which lowers this this pool in relationship to the to the yard um i think that's a pretty important factor which even minimizes it, the sight lines from both streets and even the neighbors because it's going to be as low as it's going to be there mm-hmm. um there's also a lot of plantings along the house already yes um, you feel off the driveway going towards the pool that's heavily planted as it is right now yes uh, yes our is coming in that way, but we would put back what's needed. Uh, that's important. And then if you go towards Willow Street, there's a mm-hmm. there's a big planting uh, blocking the view again. You have, yes, you have right that. So that helps. And then sinking that pool down as low as it's going to be. Chris plans on replanting the rear yard a little bit. So I think the sight lines from both streets are going to be minimized um, greatly. Yeah, they got a giant horn beam hedge along the um, on the uh, side of the house, the left hand side of the house, right there, where the where she's scrolling with the mouse there. Yeah, you can almost see it in a the picture there, to the left. Trying to give them a living, just trying to give them a living space. That's all with a pool. Okay. Tim Bohan, do you have any questions? Tim Bohan? No, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tim. George, do you have any questions? Um, no questions, Adam. Thank you very much. Okay, Rosina, questions? In the presentation in the plans, it shows lightning, lighting, but it doesn't seem that the lighting is part of the application. Am I correct or incorrect? No, we're not, we're not applying for that. Just like, you know, the, um, just like Marcus's job over there, we would, let's, let's just take this, take that piece out. Cause I'm not familiar with what. You know the, the the handbook there. I definitely want to read on the handbook on, before we go right. present that. Well, it's, it it wasn't even on the application. Like in yeah, of, uh, you know, that's great. So, even that's even better. Okay, that's so that's all I wanted. Yeah. Clarification. Yep. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Darren. No questions from me. And Art. None for me, Adam. Thank you. Well, I, uh, 
I am a little concerned. I mean, first of all, we can't, you know, we don't consider, we can't consider lighting. I'm sorry, not lighting. Can't consider um, uh, plantings in terms of screening. So, you know, the, the hornbeam hedges all up in front here, although they're great and they, they screen the, the backyard, we have to um, look at this application as if they didn't exist. Um, you know, the same with all, so you, it's great that you're going to plant because it will hide things, but in terms of in terms of how we determine whether it's appropriate or not, we can't we can't uh, consider what's any plantings. Um, okay. So given that, you know, I'm looking, and this is the existing patio, I guess, this dashed line. Yes, exactly. That's the existing patio. Yes. So and and the pool is lower. I think the pool isn't as isn't. A, I'm not having a big issue with the pool. I am having a little bit of concern with all the additional. Um, Bluestone. It, it seems like, you know, just looking at, you know, one of these plans, like this one. Yes. You know, it seems like a lot of additional patio, you know, you're adding. And then this fireplace. Yes. Um, and then this, this bar, you know, which is going to be sitting up, you know, another three feet or more. I don't three know feet, how yes. it's going to be up. Three, three feet, feet from the upper level. Yes. Um, we tried to tuck it in know, as and, best as possible. Yeah, I just it, it's you know given this the, the 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 property, you know it's basically in a fishbowl because it's corner corner lot. Mm -hmm. You know. Um. So I'm having <laughs> these are my these are my concerns. It's 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 um. And I'm not really sure how it's going to look from from Willow Street, which is my biggest concern. I think from Westway, it's not going to be visible. Yeah, it won't be visible um, no. very much. But from Willow Street, I think it might be um, might, might be visible. Well, definitely and the fireplace. This, definitely the fireplace is going to be visible because that's going to be eight feet yeah. tall. So I, I I totally I agree yeah. with you on that. And if it, especially if you're not considering any landscape part of it, is it. It's going to stick out like yeah. a sore thumb without any landscaping, you know. Yeah, so. and I know you're going to have, you're going to maintain the horn beams and everything, but yeah, we have to. We, we you know, that's our mandate. We can't consider the the, yep. the plantings. Yep, I get um, that. And then the, and then and then this kitchen piece here too. I feel like it's it's a pretty big piece, you know. Well, um, it, I mean, you could see almost you know at least half of it, you know, on the other side, and I could scooch it over more too in a, in my plan. And devise it to come yeah. over a little bit further. So it's behind the house, you know, right now where the fence, there's a fence line that goes between the house and the garage there that's heavily planted. So the West way can't see it. So I, I can move that. I can move that, um, propose to move that outdoor kitchen over them. That was 1 real important element that they really wanted. The fireplace, it yeah. may be at the little, a small little concrete fire pit. <laughs> can't get everything you want. Yeah. I mean, this is big though. What what is this here? This is like that's a, a smoker. He definitely wants a smoker it's, at his place. Yes, smoking he definitely wants a smoker. You know, and I could scooch that over so, to the, scooch that up a little bit yeah. further to the north of us here. You know, so it's so you so you're look worried about more of the line of sight than anything from the street on Willow. Yeah. So if I can because, scooch you know, that over, we, do, we don't we don't want to see this. We don't want you know. I don't think. You know, it, I think it's going to affect the streetscape if all of a sudden we have, you know, a, you know, an outdoor kitchen that's visible from Willow Street um, or a fireplace. You know, I think the pool, I think, is low enough. Yes. That you're not going to see that. You yep. know, with the, with the elevation change, you're never going to see the pool. But all these other elements are popped up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, I wish we had, you know, a, a picture, an elevation. From Willow in the, Street, sur so in the survey, you can like. see the elevation in the survey. I think you can see, but it's 3 feet tall. The outdoor kitchens. That's what they are. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know the counter cost 3 feet from exactly because you're accessing it from this side. Um, so from a design yeah. perspective, would you guys mind if I move that due north, like right to the closer to the step and I, it's in just an easy design. I can shrink it up to doesn't have to have that little L shaped bar yeah. piece it, you know, mm -hmm. and. You know, just be a straight section. You know, I was just trying to give them a little bar. 
Yeah, I think it would make it. I think it would be it would be better. Um, but but yeah. I mean, all these perspectives are great. Yes, know? it really gives you a sense. But I, yeah, I'd love to see one from. Uh, from they the see, see the hedge there. That's the hedge that's existing. So uh, yeah, here. Yes, yeah. exactly behind no, the fireplaces. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if, taking um, out the fireplace, that's a quick. I, that's an easy. It's an easy one for me. To, the kitchen is one the one that they really will love, and want it, have to I, modify that. I mean, it, I think it, if it can be hidden more, um, yes, it, might it would consider it if it was um, hidden more. So the other question is the the uh, the fence around the property. So so this yes, where's um. You're going to do a picket fence or as a pool fence. Yes, yeah, so that 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 fence that you have your hand the, the, on the mouse on there. That's directly yeah, across, across the street. Across the street. Yes. Okay, so that so the whole property is going to get fenced in like with this. You're putting yes, a whole new fence. three three sides faced with this, and then the north side of yeah. Scroll down a so little bit more. Is, that the, the yeah go in a U, U shape all the way around, and then the back along the perimeter back there along the back perimeter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up top there, that that's gonna be chain link there because there's existing plantings there that we want to weave okay. the um, chain link but up in this, there. But this will be yes, all picket all because picket. there's ex there's existing picket there now. If you if you can believe it, it's really yeah. it's decrepit, but it's it's all just existing picket. Yeah. How much? How different is it from this one across the street? It seems like it's almost very similar in height. Um. Yeah. Does it? Well, this one doesn't meet pool code because it's got that run on the bottom. And it's climbable. You know, uh, okay, that's the that's, that's the key. But and we looked at the cross the street, and I'm like, well, if they got it there in the historic district, and they're on a corner, they said this has got to it's got to work here. So I took direct pictures. Okay. Well, those are all my comments. Um, yeah. That I have. Um, I don't know if anyone else because this is my first rodeo. What would what do you recommend me doing from a design perspective to get this? So that you guys would review it and, and take a peek at it. You, you know, can, you can always we, we do we do pre you know pre application meetings. Um, so if you have a, an application that you're considering um, and you want to get it in front of the, some commissioners before the meeting to get some feedback, mm -hmm. you know we do that. That's awesome. So I'm going to do give that. Me a call then. or send me a, yeah. Send an I'll email or whatever and, and yeah uh, yeah because then you're not, you're not wasting your time. You know totally. <laughs> So that's what I'm coming thinking. in with 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 things that are glaring issues. Um, right well, definitely back. in the fireplace, I can see that, and I thought that that may be a problem. So I, I you know, but they, that's what they wanted. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can get it. Um, so, yeah. um, in mm -hmm. order to expedite things here, what do I? What do we do? You know, we're just kind of new to all of us here. Some of this stuff. Um, what do we do from this standpoint with the design change? Do I take it out, and you is it still, or do we got to wait for another month or two, or? How does this work? Oh, you have to wait for, for the next meeting. The next deadline, um, I believe, is um, like next Wednesday, the twentieth, for the for the uh, uh, June meeting. Maybe so it's not like May. we can make an addendum. People. So it's not like we can make an no, addendum no, to no. this. Okay. No. And it depends on how it's denied. If it's denied without prejudice, then you can come back with with the, the application. Basic same application with changes. Um, if it's oh, denied so that's... outright. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we, if you guys, if you guys take into that prejudice, you know, we'll, I'll make the modifications. I mean, it's literally a click of a mouse moving things over, you know, and taking things out. Yeah. So. <clears throat> exactly. And if you, if you want to give me a call tomorrow, I'll be happy to discuss it. Discuss it. That further. sounds great. That sounds great. Okay. Yep. Um, anyway, moving on, uh, I didn't receive any uh, letters in favor of this application and I did not receive any letters opposing the application. Um, and just to ask the public, if anyone would care to speak in favor, I don't believe I have anyone. No, anyone care to speak against? No. Okay. Then the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you for your all your time, guys. Can I say something? Yes. Can I say something quickly? Yes. A streetscape elevation might be helpful from both sides. Um, 
just to give an idea of how everything relates to the house. So that 3D that 3D rendering was pretty much to scale. That's what that's why I tried to show that. No, that's, that's very that's that's a powerful image. You know. Yes. It, it, that's it's pretty really much good to idea scale. What, what you're proposing. Yeah. Yeah. No, but then I think that's good, helpful for all you guys to have that information if more people can do that. So whatever we can do to help on, on our end uh, as well, too. No one's trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. Which, so so I'll give you a call tomorrow just to tell you, see where I can go with this. And hopefully some some of that prejudice thing, to at least get the pool in, so to speak, and you move with the pool and hold off on the kitchen, whatever, and we go apply for that at that time, you know? All yeah. right? Okay. Thank okay, you guys Thanks for on. all your thanks. time. I know it's crazy time. So <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Bye, Jim. Next Bye, time on the agenda is uh, uh, David Haddad, 1038 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 1038 Old Post Road in Fairfield. For A, light fixtures, B, step to new door, C, bluestone patio, D, cedar fence, and E, outdoor kitchen. Yeah, so this is Robert Storms uh, with the Future Building LLC. I'm acting as agent and general contractor for the Haddads. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I'll bring up the application here. Okay. Can everybody see? Okay, uh, so 1038 Old Post Road, we had had a previous application for a patio door on the rear of the structure, uh, which we were approved for. There were a couple of items um, that you had wanted to see, uh, the step at the back of the door and the lighting that was going in. Um, so I do have those in uh, this presentation. Uh, additionally, uh, to this project out the rear of 1038 Old Post Road, uh, the owner uh, thought that during the application, we might propose um, some ideas for what he wants to do to finish the rear patio. Uh, there's an existing chain link fence that abuts the Fairfield Public, Public Library. Hold on, I just have to move. Uh, that uh, is unsightly from his side. Uh, he wanted to take that down and replace it with a new cedar fence. Um, and inside of that fencing perimeter, he wanted to put a bluestone patio with an outdoor kitchen, um, 12 by four, uh, with stone veneer and also, uh, put in a front patio. Uh, we had submitted this drawing kind of midway, uh, during the application process. And I have an updated map here that, um, you don't have, uh, but I have here for you to see. So this here is Old Post Road uh, at the bottom of the drawing. On the left side is the uh, driveway access for the Fairfield Public Library. And as you turn the corner uh, to the top of the drawing is the parking area where the Fairfield Public Library is. So on the left boundary here, there's a small stone wall which is staying in place. Um, this is where the chain link fence runs. Uh, currently abutting the Fairfield Public Library, and it wraps around towards the back uh, between the parking lot and the property. Uh, my father, there's another Robert Storms on this meeting. Uh, we're in business together. Uh, my father had gone and met with Brenda Kupchick's office and the Fairfield Public Library to tell them what we we're proposing on the property if they would be okay with the removal of the chain link fence and the installation of a cedar fence um, that you can see here, uh, both of them approved it uh, without question. Um, and I do have a, an email chain uh, from uh, Town of Fairfield uh, and the um, librarian at the Fairfield Public Library. Uh, let me just scroll this down here. Oh, it just happened. I'm sorry. Hold on two seconds. Okay. Off the front of the building here, um, the owner also wanted to 
Sorry, let me just move this over and having some tech. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the owner also wanted a front patio area that has a uh, small stone veneer wall with bluestone cap uh, and the same bluestone material out the front uh, just for sitting. He definitely likes the downtown Fairfield area out there and kind of likes uh, to sit and watch the ongoing uh, traffic out there. Um, so I'm going to scroll down from the survey here. So, again, this is the front of the property um, to the left side is where the front patio would be located. And this is the view of the current backyard and the current chain link fence from the Fairfield public library side. Um, this is also the location of the previous uh, application where the patio door uh, is. So he would exit from the back there into uh, this area for the back patio. Oh, this uh, addresses the lighting fixtures. So on the previous application where the back patio door was, there's a uh, area for two lights to go uh, flanking the door on the left and the right. So this is the fixture that uh, we're looking to use. Uh, also to address the previous application, uh, stepping down from the patio door onto the patio uh, was a, uh, requires a single step. At the time, we weren't exactly sure what we would, would like to use for the material, but we've decided a 12 foot single piece of tumbled granite uh, to go. So you'd step out of the door onto that granite piece and then down to the proposed bluestone patio. Uh, so this is the cedar fence. Uh, his, he does have a plan to uh, paint it white, I believe. Uh, it's uh, six foot high. Uh, the top. Uh, one foot of it has this picket feature, as mentioned that it's cedar and uh, the posts are, are pressure treated material. It will, they will have a cap on top of the posts. Um, and if you'd like, I can scroll back up uh, after I finish uh, the next few pages and show you exactly where the perimeter is of the fence uh, around the rear patio. This is uh, just an idea a picture of uh, the blue stone um, pattern and then what the outdoor kitchen could look like. This outdoor kitchen that we would like to install uh, has a barbecue top uh, and a sink. That's it. There's no dishwasher or anything like that out there and it will all be 36 inches high. Um, this is the veneer material that we'd like to use uh, on the front wall and the outdoor kitchen. Um, it will have a mortar joint like this as opposed to a dry stack. All right, and then previous, this is just the email chain, uh, uh, the correspondence with uh, Town of Fairfield and the Fairfield Public Library, as well as Brenda Kupchick's office approving the removal of the chain link fence and the uh, installation of the cedar fence. So I'll just scroll back up here to the survey so that you can see the perimeter area. All right, so as mentioned, the front patio, we'd like this uh, wall, small, uh, I believe it's a uh, 29 inch high, is that right? That no, 19. Nine, I'm like sorry, the, 19. The height of a chair. Okay, 19 inches high, just a small, Little wall delineating the patio area again with a bluestone uh, pattern, random pattern. And then the cedar fence would come from the existing rear left side of the house, uh, come across here, and then continue its way around uh, the driveway area for the Fairfield Public Library, across the back, and then kind of return in the middle, I guess you could say, of the rear of the house. So this whole area, the bluestone patio and the outdoor kitchen would be uh, surrounded by fence. So you wouldn't be able to see any of the patio or the kitchen from the uh, from really any side of the property. Uh, the only thing that you'd really be able to see in a line of sight uh, would be the front patio area. If I could so, just make a quick comment, um, Scott, uh, Scott Jarzambic, 
was uh, physically walked around with me with this project. And one of the things that we agreed to is to keep the fence. Um, he wanted a bigger line of sight uh, when you make that turn from the side uh, to the rear parking lot. And so we agreed with uh, him and with Brenda to keep the fence on the left side three feet off the property line. And then since the fence uh, was right on the property, the existing chain link fence was right on the property line, um, they asked that we come one foot into the property so that then that fence is um, our obligation to fix and maintain and not the towns. Uh, and that's that um, uh, email chain, um, Adam, that you had were involved with, with um, uh, Brenda and um, Scott and with Matt Decker. I think that kind of sums up what our uh, application is at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, George, any questions? You're asking me, Adam? Um, no, George. Uh, no, I don't have any questions, Adam. Thank you very much. Thanks, George. Rosina? Um, question about the front patio. How high do you say it was 19 inches high? Uh, the wall around the perimeter would be 19 inches high. But the patio and is the on the wall. And the wall of the perimeter of that patio, is it similar to the um, outdoor kitchen? Yeah, the same material. Okay. But the bluestone patio okay, up front is on grade. Okay. Okay, thank you. Darren? No questions from me. Did you say the, Art. the riser of 12 Jim, inches? Jim, None for Jim, me, Adam. turn in. Thank you, Art. Okay, Ryan? Jim, now it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Robert, did you say, say there was gonna be a riser of 12 inches? Uh, no, that's it, the distance between the um, the level of the floor on the interior of the building and the outdoor patio is about 13, 14 inches. <laughs> so the piece of granite that we're putting in is, you know, roughly seven inches high. So that'll split the difference. So it's okay. basically a step onto the granite and then a step down to the patio. So, so the riser will be seven inches. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That was all. No other questions. Thanks, Jim. So, um, basically, I mean, you're not going to see the riser anyway, right? Because it's no. going to be no, it's, it's going to be completely all surrounded by, the by the fence. Yeah, that's correct. Same with the kitchen. Correct. Okay, so we really don't even need to consider those. And um, well, um, I, I'm I'm finding the the front patio a little strange, and I, I haven't seen um, something like this before. Especially not in the district where somebody has a little front patio and it has a little like a sitting wall or sh shorter than a sitting wall, like 19 inches, you said? Yeah, 19 inches just to kind of delineate the space. Um, I do know my client, he's very active in Fairfield Center. He goes to the bookstore and, and works from there and he, you know, rides his bike everywhere. So he kind of likes the the feeling of the city life in downtown Fairfield. So my idea is is primarily what this patio is going to be used for is for him to sit and work out front okay yeah i just don't know how it's going to look with the house especially if it has a raised stone wall around it yeah it's not flush to grade yeah i don't have um, any capability of doing like a 3d drawing but i could certainly um ask for you know his input and in, in what we might be able to do to to get that together Okay, um, that's the only thoughts I had. Or, or to, um, quite honestly, if it wasn't if it wasn't a consideration for the wall, then just eliminate the wall. I mean, yeah, you can do. It. I mean, I think it, I don't know. <clears throat> Did it seem that the raised wall seems a little? Um, I just don't know how it's going to look. You know. Yes, yeah. and I I will say this: I do know that he's he's very eager to get the backyard area. Um, going. And so yeah. I, I would say that if it was, you know, 
something we could come back with for the front patio area. You know, if we could kind of break the two apart, um, that would be great. If the rear was approved and then the front might be pending, um, I, I know that he would appreciate that. Okay. Take them under consideration. Um, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposing this application. And I don't see anyone in the audience who's here to speak for or against. So the uh, hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our executive session. First things we need to do is approve minutes from uh, the March 10th meeting. Um, we have Rosina, Hart, and Jim were here. Myself, can I get a motion to approve minutes? I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, second. Yep. Rosina seconds. All in favor? Motion passes Aye. unanimously. Um, we still have the uh, last presenters. Uh, yeah, there we okay. go. Okay. Um, oh, I guess we should have done the considerations of the public hearings first. Sorry, jumped ahead on the agenda. First, uh, first item on the agenda, and Jim Bohan, you you will be voting on this. Southport Congregational Church, 524 Pequot Avenue in Southport, for property located at 524 Pequot Avenue in Southport to A, remove existing playground equipment and B, new playground equipment. Can I get a motion? Adam, I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay. Rosina. Rosina. I was going to say to approve A and B as presented. Thank you. And Art seconds. I'll second that A and B. Okay. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor. All opposed. Not opposed. No abstentions. Motion passes. Uh, second <coughs> item on the agenda, and George Clark will be voting on this. Christine Isatis and Jared Ford, 46 Station Street in Southport. For property located at 46 Jason Street, <coughs> Southport, to a uh, new two story detached garage studio, B, reconfigured driveway and walks, C, new lanterns and path lighting, D, a new AC unit with evergreen screening, E, demo existing detached garage, F, replace existing gutters and leaders, lower roof, G, new white aluminum gutters and leaders, upper roof. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve F and G as presented and deny without prejudice A through E. I'll second that motion. I'll second that as well. Okay, Alyssa seconds. Darren seconds. Darren. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not Alyssa. Alyssa's not even here. I meant to say Darren. <laughs> My it's been a long day for everybody, it seems like. Seems like it, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so to approve F, replace existing gutters, okay, and G, aluminum gutters, and deny A through E without prejudice. Discussion? Why would we deny uh, item D, the, uh, the, the, the uh, heating and cooling unit? Because I think the placement is contingent on where the new garage is. So if we're not approving the garage, we can't yeah. really approved right. the new I, condensing unit. I, it would be better to be yeah, put into I, one. Into one. Yeah. Okay. It was Thank an you. issue to the location. Right. Why yeah. was it an Call issue? Favor. Just for my oh, edification. Sorry, go ahead. I just it, I think the, the issue was I, I get the location, but um one of the one of the public mentioned noise and so forth. And I just I don't I just don't think that's a consideration for the HDC. Nor, you know, and, and again, just for the purposes of the hearing, I didn't, there, there was a objection to uh, somebody looking into someone else's window. I, I, I just don't think that that ought to be a consideration either for the purposes of any subsequent hearing. 
that's part not, I agree with you. There, there were, I think there were a lot of um, uh, things that were thrown out there that were not accurate and and not within our purview. You know, it's like we, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be considering some of the issues that were being um, brought up. Um, but massing and scale are an issue, and that's yes, that's absolutely. what we're denying about presidents. <laughs> So we want the neighbors okay, to be thank happy. Yeah. All right. I get Back it. There. Thank you. All opposed? Where's George? I can't see you, George. I'm on. Are you voting? Would you vote yes or no? I I voted in favor of, of the proposal. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh not none opposed, no abstentions, motion passes unanimously. Um, next item on the agenda, Jay Krushkin and Lauren Marcus, 155 Rose Hill in Southport for property located at 155 Rose Hill in Southport for A, redesign driveway, B, remove existing stone wall, new stone wall, C, new handrails, D, whitewash existing brick, and E, new site lighting. I get a motion. I'll make the motion to approve a through D and deny E without prejudice for I'll discussion. And Darren seconds. Discussion. I'm My okay only concern I is. Someone had a, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> My only concern is that um, item A, they were on the fence between oil and stone and asphalt. So there's no a real oh. definition of which one they're gonna use. I understand the budget. Um, it's not, um, it's what's gonna um, make the decision, but I don't know if oh. we should make a decision on that one without knowing which one they're gonna be using. That's a good point. We can make a stipulation that it's blacktop. So if they want to change it, they have to come back. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And I think I, we were they, okay they, with the whitewashing item D. I thought somebody had objected yeah. to that. I had objected to it just because there's been a lot of discussion with, I know other applications aren't really pertinent, but there's been a lot of discussion on the, on this commission, particularly as it pertains to the handbook about painting brick. And I personally am not in favor of painting any brick that isn't already painted because it'll just degrade it. So I personally don't think that that's the best option um, because ultimately it's undermining the brick. So, I mean, I understand in this case, the chimney has been whitewashed at some point in the past. So that's not a discussion we're having, but that was my objection to whitewashing the brick on the risers. Okay. Whitewashing should be detrimental to the brick. I mean, painting is. Yeah, just, I mean, I've seen whitewashing used on other things and it ends up just being an issue because ultimately somebody wants to take it off and then that degrades the brick. And I just, I'm, if the brick is untreated, just leave it untreated. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I, understand kind of, why I didn't have that, that much of an issue with that one, just because it's a small area in the steps. If it was in the house, I will be completely opposed. But no, I totally, I totally get that and I appreciate it. I guess to me, I'm just looking at brick is brick is brick is brick. And I'm concerned yeah. that, you know, somebody will come with risers Presses. or bigger stairs or a whole chunks of stairs that want to whitewash it and say, well, my neighbor did it. And I just think that that's a slippery slope. If we're talking about leaving untreated brick untreated, let's leave it untreated. If we're talking about whitewashing is okay, there's a lot of discussions around whitewashing versus removal of paint and whitewashing and stuff. And I think that's just a bigger issue to me. Mm -hmm. My personal thing, I've seen too many buildings with brick painted or treated or whatever that ultimately somebody comes along and buys the house and wants to remove that and it becomes a massive issue. Um, so I'm just not a huge fan of, of that personally. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm, that's that's fine. I'm okay with whitewashing. Um, Jim, you're voting on this. You guys ready to take a vote? I 
I am. Yes. Okay. Do we need to amend okay. the, mo the motion to add the stipulation about oh. the oil? Yes. Yes. Good point. I'm ready to move on. Regina, <laughs> so would you care to make a friendly? I'll amend. I'll amend the motion to approve A through D with the stipulation that the driveway is asphalt and deny E without prejudice. And you're happy with no mention of whitewash? We're denying the whitewashing without prejudice. Okay. So, so deny the. No, no, we're not. I'll second that. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. sorry. Did, did I, I misunderstand? I might have misunderstood. I think you, you approved A through D and as presented and, and denied E without prejudice. And which one is E? Is that correct? E is the Lighting. site letting. Oh, okay. Is that correct? We, we could amend the whole thing um, not to create the precedent of the whitewash. Will that be better or do we need to vote on the good one? No, you can amend. Well, I think it's fine to amend it. Um, okay. But so, Mike, just to, just to understand, you, you want to deny the whitewash? I, I mean, I'm not in favor of it, but if everybody else is, I'll just... And it might create the precedent. It's it already happened on that same street um, with one building getting completely painted. So it sort of makes sense. You think it makes well, sense yeah, to deny make... it without prejudice? To deny it without prejudice, yeah. I think that's a problem because it's the the handbook is silent on it. So you know we're we're making it an ad hoc decision without. Uh, you know, creating guidance in the handbook. So, um, I, I wouldn't be prepared to say that, uh, uh, you know, the commission is of the mind that whitewashing is, is, is not appropriate. So I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's fair to the, uh, to the homeowner or the public. I mean, in the handbook, you we want to have that discussion discuss and we haven't taken it on yet. Yeah. So I don't yeah, think we can the, deny it. But the handbook also well, says I mean, you, that the brick shouldn't be painted. I believe. It's, it's, it's a suggestion. Yes. Okay. What 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 is the motion we have on the table now? I guess that's the question. I guess. I, I think our, from my perspective, we have A, a through D is approved, and E is denied without prejudice. With the stipulation Yeah, with the stipulation of driveway has to be black off. Yeah. 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 So why don't we vote on that, and okay. vote vote whatever you're whatever you think is appropriate. Okay. All in favor. Okay. All opposed. Motion passes four to one. No abstentions. Okay. Uh, next item, George, you're voting on this one. Dan and Carrie Wilson, 14 Willow Street in Southport for property located at 14 Willow Street in Southport for A, new 14 by 33 in ground pool, B, pool decking, C, pool fence, and D, outdoor kitchen. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to deny it A through D without prejudice. Second. And art seconds. Discussion. The pool is not the issue, correct? No, I I don't think it's the issue, but no, I don't think the fencing's an issue either. Yeah, I don't think the fence thing's an issue. But the fire. This is the one with the fireplace. The fireplace is potentially an issue because of the height. And the kitchen. Yeah. And the kitchen. Yeah. And the and the and actually the fireplace isn't even on the application, so. Oh, okay, so we can't really consider that anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they realize that, but you know, they don't. It's it's not on the application. The the outdoor kitchen is, and I think, you know, I just have a problem with that that huge bar out in the back, and whether it's visible from Willow Street is can be an issue. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't. I I'd agree. But. Um, 
Anyway, any other discussion about this? I mean, My question like is on the problem black pool. Wall fencing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So this is one of those gray areas for me because we talk about pool fencing and then screening, but we're really not supposed to be taking in to consideration landscaping and supposed to be thinking about all this as if no landscaping exists. So those, those as I understand it, Jim, 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 you can't so, speak. Jim, Jim. Okay. Jim, sorry, because you're you're not you're not voting on this application, so you can't speak about it. Okay. So I just get confused in these situations because the fence itself might not be something we would approve without that landscaping. And I understand that, you know, screening and perpetuity and, and all that stuff, but it's still a very gray area for Are you referring to the to the to the uh, wire fence, the chain link? Yes. Yes. But we take see we definitely uh, we we have always approved chain link fences for pool fencing that's mm -hmm. planted as long as they plant it around it. I mean, because clearly I don't think they want to see it. No, um, I get your point. And this is on the rear property line. Mm -hmm. um, I know not. In I think all it needs cases. to be addressed in the handbook. I think we yeah, need to address it in the handbook. And that's something like I've sought guidance in the past from SHPO and Preservation Connecticut, and it's a very, very gray area. Um, yeah. So it's one that always makes me slightly uncomfortable just from a CGS perspective. Um, so I'm just, I'm just putting that up just you know? for thought, food for thought. Some of the, I mean, think about some of the pools that are like in the middle of a property and they have the fences literally around, the, you know, there's, there was one up on um, Bronson, I think, that was sort of an exposed pool. And the pool fencing, if, if it was anything but a wire fence with, you know, with uh, screening around it, it, it would look terrible. Yeah. You know, it would look like a pool with a picket fence around it. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. I completely <laughs> understand. But yeah. it is a very gray area for me because we're not supposed to be taking into consideration landscaping, but yet we kind of have to mm -hmm. in certain cases. Yeah. So it's something that I think we need to very carefully yeah. think about and word for the, the handbook. Yeah, I agree. And in the current motion, we're denying everything, or are we approving the pool? No, we're, just, we're everything the is denied without prejudice. Denying no. everything, but we can vote on that and decide after if. As anyone. if the pool is not something that's contentious, I don't see a problem, especially since it seems like it's so low, it's not really visible. Well, yeah, I don't see a problem. Of, uh, voting to approve that if that's how the commission oh. wants to vote. Well, um, I think we just vote on this and see see where it falls. So, all in favor? So, what's the motion? To deny without deny. prejudice A through D. A, okay. yeah, A through D without prejudice. All in favor? All opposed? And the motion fails. So we need another motion. So I'll make the motion. I think the pool is number a, is letter A. Yes. Yep. I'll make right. the motion to approve A as submitted and deny without prejudice B through D. I'll second that. Well, the only we have to do. Uh, I think the fence needs to be included. The pool fence needs to be included, which is C. So it's A and D. A and approving A and C. Okay, sorry, I'm looking at the agenda and I don't have it itemized. So my motion is to approve A and C and deny without prejudice B and D. And I would second that. George seconds that. Okay. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Well, positions, abstentions, and motion passes. Last item on the agenda, David Haddad 
1038 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 1038 Old Post Road in Fairfield for A, light fixtures, B, step to new door, C, bluestone patio, D, cedar fence, E, outdoor kitchen. Jim Bohan, you're voting on this. Thank you. Can we get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve A, B, D, and E. A, um, B, D, and E? Yes. And C, be approved with the stipulation that the front patio. Sorry? Um, can C be approved with a stipulation that the front patio is not included? Does that make any sense or? Oh, yeah. I think you can approve everything with the stipulation that the front patio be be uh, excluded from that approval. Okay, let's do that then. So A through E with the stipulation that the front patio is excluded from the um, approval. Thanks. Okay. Discussion? Just so I know, Adam, what's the basis of not approving the front patio. I think I tend to agree with you, but I just want to know what's the the basis for all. Voting. I mean, I I find it sort of a strange patio. Um, I, the, you know, it's sort of like that. It's it's on the side of the house, front of the house, and it has a nine inch, you know, wall around it. It's kind of random. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Um, I just don't know how it's going to look, you know, on the on the on old right on Old Post Road too. You know, I think it's out of character with the district. Yeah. Out of character as like a as a as an element for for uh, the house. <laughs> I just think, you well, know, maybe true. if you want to have like a, I don't know, it's, it's just a it's really awkward, asymmetric sort of patio in the front of the house. So anyway, that's all right. That's all in favor? Sorry. If 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 Rosine has made that motion, I'll I'll, I'll second it. Oh, good. We don't have a second. I don't think, right? Okay. All in favor? Feel tough. Um, Art, what happened to Art? All opposed? No opposed. What do you vote? How would you Art's, vote? Art's in Art. favor. I just lost my video okay, for a second. All right, I'm in favor. All right. Motion passes. Yeah, so. All right, moving on. We approve the minutes out of order. Um, chairman's report, we have repairs, 204 Harbor Road for repair fence, 648 Harbor Road, reset landing stones and railings to front stair, 137 Rose Hill Road, replace front steps, railings, porch, and driveway in kind. 524 Pequot Avenue, masonry restoration and repointing, 14 Willow Street replaced roofing kind, and 155 Rose Hill repair existing fence. Um, I have no violations this month. And old business update the discussion, uh, handbook discussion revisions. Okay, uh, Darren, so do you have anything to report in that area? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sort of. Um, so I met with Chris Shea and we went over a couple of his issues with the book. Um, I think that. He and I would certainly like another work session because there's been some problems with the maps that he brought up and we need to really very stringently go through the maps and and list what's in the district. Some of the addresses are incorrect. Some things seem to have been amended and are not in there. Um, I think Thank there's you. another okay. local historic property that's not listed. So that needs to be addressed. I'm working through the revisions that have been sent to me. Um, I most recently got one from Rosina and by recent, I mean two months ago, but I have it. Um, I'm about halfway through with some of the revisions, but I'm still waiting on stuff from other people. Um, so there's a point where I'm going to need that to finalize it. Um, okay. So I, I made some, I made some comments on your, on the last thing that you sent. Does that get updated automatically or do I have to send it back to you? No, you have to send that to me. Okay, I'll send it back to you because I I made some comments and that would be awesome. And I think you know in the margin, 
Yeah, that would be great. Um, and I think there was some discussion about you having a look at the fences in particular and, and doing some discussion of those. Um, I'm trying to think I have to revisit the, the rest of it. I, I've kind of gone through and dealt with the easy inconsistency stuff and I've been working on wording yeah. some of the more elaborate things, but certainly that's something we should go through on a work session because how I would word it is not necessarily how somebody else would word it. And eventually this has to go to the town attorneys just to check for, you know, legality, small minor thing. Um, so I'm working on it. I'm getting there, but, okay. <laughs> but it is not done yet. I'm hoping before I turn on no. 150, we'll be done. <laughs> yeah. Before, I, before I'm done with my updated draft. Sorry? Have you circulated an updated draft? Not recently because I really started hardcore working on rewording once I talked to Chris because I was worried that Chris wasn't at the last work session and he has some strong opinions about lighting and things like that. So I was worried about working on any of the changes before talking to him because I was worried I would just need to undo it. So it's been within the last month that I've really been working on it. So I'll get it to a point where it will make sense to people and I'll send it out um, what I've done. I just have to go through and make sure all my thoughts make sense to everybody else. So you're not reading like my shorthand notes. And the second point, the um... The business of landscaping, does it count as shielding or not? That was an issue that someone was going to discuss with the town attorney. Has there been any movement on that? I have not talked to the town attorney about it. I've talked to SHPO and um, Preservation Connecticut about it, but that's not a legal opinion. So that's one of those things that we really you're should talking discuss about in a session. Is that a the screening issue? Is that what yes, you're talking about? like what I said before. Yeah. Yeah. What would the town attorney need to opine on screening? And another part says it doesn't. Um, I think other, we just need to be consistent. I think we can, we can we can do it. I mean, I I think we can do it. I know you know, like the state, whatever the the guidelines. I think for the historic district says you're not supposed to, but I think we can we can do whatever we want. Yeah, but there shouldn't be an inconsistency <laughs> in the handbook. I'm trying to get exactly. rid of the inconsistencies. What I'm concerned about is not opining on on the screening per se, but just making sure the wording that we choose is not counter what is said in CGS and is and and gives us whatever purview that we're actually looking for. Um, that's my concern. Mm. I know in other in other municipalities that is a concern and. The town attorneys come in with very specific style language that they want used. Um, so that's my one hesitation with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, moving on, the I, I think you all saw the latest um, proposal, or it's not really a proposal, but thoughts on 65 Station Street. I have to recuse myself now on this one, so I'm going to shut off my, but I have some new business, so I will be back when you guys are. Okay. Any, discuss any, any discussion on that? Any thoughts? No. I'm trying to do my comment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's what it is what it is. It's a, it's what were they Zina, at the moment. Sure. I'm sorry. I just want to know what Rosina's thoughts were in a nutshell. Um, I don't, Rosina. You can. I you, felt you, that you, the site full in a way. Like I drove in, and for six units, it felt that it was a little bit small. Um, other than that, I felt that there's a brick building already next to it on that same street. So the building seems simple enough um, that I didn't have that many issues with it. So that's kind of my general comment. Thanks. You don't have any issue with the massing?
I mean, it's a, it's a lot of building jammed in a small it's, spot. Exactly. Exactly. That was yeah. kind of my main issue, that the site itself looks small for what they're trying to fit right. in there. So, and, they, and they're going to take, they want to demolish part, part of the uh, existing buildings. The the concrete, building. you know? Yeah. The uh, Lynn yeah. plant is the neighbor most affected by this. She's in that tiny house right next to the mm -hmm. church. And actually, Albert has oh, yeah. it. Uh, and she points out, and I haven't confirmed it. Uh, how, as you're driving east on Pequot Road, coming into Southport Village, when you're still west of Congregational Church, and you look up, are those new buildings going to affect that village skyline adversely? And I, I don't know the answer to that. I think so. When you when you turn the corner of Pequot, where that sharp turn is, I think you'll see them. So when when you're when you're at just at the start of the Congregational Church parking lot, on, on the right of Pequot, as you're driving east, if, if you look up there, you see the Congregational Church, and Lynn thinks that those new buildings are going to affect that, that whole skyline adversely. Yeah, I I would agree. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't any, any drawings showing the skyline and its effect upon the skyline from intermediate distances like that. But it's a concern. Yep. And mm -hmm. you, you know, I'll keep you posted on what. Really keep you guys posted if anything happens that we need to be concerned about. I don't think. I don't think. Um, from what I understand, like they, they'd have to come through us and get approval from us in order to move forward. You know, they can't, they can't, like they can go through zoning without adhering to zoning regulations. They can't do that with historic, is my understanding after talking to the, the town attorney. The same with that other issue, the, uh, I can't remember the, what, it, what it's called, but they're trying to do more high density housing near the train station. Um, anyway. Adam, I'm sorry, my phone was on. Adam, my phone was on mute, but uh, but I'm I'm a little concerned with the massing and 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 I think that view line, the 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 uh, the skyline will uh, will be a, will be affected. So I think they've got they've got some work to do to get it. You know, that's my thinking. Yeah, I agree. Work to do to get it approved. You know. Yeah, yeah. The other issue, Adam, I believe, is pending state legislation. That business what of issue? changing zoning near I mean, train stations. I, I believe that's a proposed no, state legislation. Yeah. Um, anyway. If I hear anything, I'll keep you posted. If anyone else hears anything, please let me know. Um, all right, Darren, if you're listening, you can come back. Hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if, does anybody have any new business? I have no new business. I have new business. <laughs> um, I'd really like for us to apply for a survey and planning grant to update the HR. Step out for just a sec. Okay, yeah. what, Darren? I'm sorry. The historic resource inventory. It's really old. It's like over 30 years old. I think the last time it was updated was in the 90s. Um, it's missed a lot of historic resources and the ones that it does cover some of them have been altered pretty significantly and those should be updated. Um, so we need several of them and it's part of our CLG compliance to really kind of do this stuff. And it's okay. a free $30,000 that we then put out an RFP and find a consultant and the consultant does, you know, 150 forms and give us an updated 20 page report on the development of Fairfield. 
And once that's done, I think we should apply for another one and just keep doing them until our HRI is in better nick. I think there's been one HRI. It stopped short of my house on Stilson. I'm the oldest house on the this part of Stilson, so I don't get that one. Um, and I think it's silly that we haven't done it. That's my presentation. Yeah, you're, 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 <laughs> you're, I mean, like your house should be part of it uh, um, listed on our, our uh, list of historic homes, right? Not yet. Uh, well, we just got state registered <laughs> in October. We're I'm I'm doing a few things before I do the local district, just so I don't bother you. We're doing okay. something fine, like we're restoring our windows and doing stuff like that. But I don't want to do the local district and then have to bother you with that stuff. But we're going to go once we get our windows restored. We will be doing. I've written the the nomination. I just need to send you guys the study report. Um, okay. So like. My so, house. So, so you don't just get you don't you don't just go on the state historic registration and as a re registered historic property. Oh, well, oh yes. I thought you meant like in the handbook as part of the properties. I'm not I'm not a local district yet or a local property yet. I will be. Oh, so you have to do I'll that. You have to become a local property to do that first. To to be put in the to be under consideration of the HDC. Yes, the state register okay. gives like me access Gina did to with tax the Yes. So, so is the Sea Lodge? Do the Sea Lodge do that or are they just state? They're just state. Okay. And they don't want to so be they have access because to they tax come under our jurisdiction. No. No. Um they might ultimately so want for, to do that. That's a question for Sasquatch Sasquanog. If you're if you're under state, are you are you um restricted to what you can do to the house? Nope. No. National it, and state don't put you under yeah, it's just a designation. N national and state don't give you any restrictions. The only thing national does is it gives you some sort of protection under the Connecticut Environmental Protection Act um, uh, from unreasonable destruction. So somebody can bring a SEPA case if I wanted to tear down a national register property. And if the state finds that there's integrity, they work with the AG and kind of figure that out with the homeowner. Um, but past that, okay national and state the real impetus there is for the tax credits because you can get 30 percent back of your hard costs of constructions for up to a hundred thousand dollars per project and it's not something that taps out you can just keep going back at, for every hundred thousand dollar project and it's for the life of the house so it transfers to subsequent owners okay uh, great so local is really the only thing that puts heavy restrictions on homeowners. Yep. Um, HRI doesn't do anything at all. It's just a survey going, hey, your house might be historic. Here's kind of a brief summary of why it might be historic. Some of them will be researched. Some will just be researched with a map. It's just an, a way to acknowledge this is a district or this is a potential district or these are potential houses that could be in a district or these are resources that you haven't really recognized or there for whatever reason. Um, here's the breadth of architecture that's in the town that is of significance for A, B, and C reasons. I mean, a lot of towns are starting to look at the mid-century modern kind of developments because, you know, capes and ranches are readily getting ripped down right now. So mm. I think Fairfield's a little bit behind the times, if I can say that. Um, with, for with example, okay. this, this Treadfield area, I know there was one person that was coming to the meetings and very interested in knowing all the things, but I'm not sure that they want it to be a district. So that's right. one. HRI doesn't do that. The only thing that comes out of the HRI is that we have updated forms so that if one of these houses goes up for state register or national register or decides to become a local property, we already have a little bit of background on it. And if it comes up for demolition, if it's a significant enough house, we'll know about it and could be objection objection objectors to that property getting demolished um if if that's the way you want it to go other towns the hdc is involved in the demolition process so those hris become even more important in those cases because they have some background when those come before them i think the hri just in general 
is a really good thing to have in practice just for understanding the development of the town. And because we're a CLG, it's also something that's part of the stipulations is keeping it updated. And it is very not updated. Very not updated. Um, <laughs> where, where, where do you find the list of the local properties? I mean, can, is it on she, the she, SHPO? What's it called? SHPO? Preservation Office? Yeah. SHPO. No, well, I mean, no. the HRI doesn't focus on local districts. It's just a survey of historic homes. So when you hire the consultants, you can say, we're interested in surveying homes that aren't already on our HRI that are dated based on the tax assessors before between, I don't know, 1780 and 1865. And so then you'll get that list from the tax assessor and they can do, you know, a drive around and pick the most, the 150 most significant properties or the ones that look like they have the most integrity or whatever the case may be. And they do 150 forms on those properties. So you can put stipulations when you hire them. Sorry? The museum has a list of some of the properties oh, that please. they consider um, important. Yeah, so the museum has one. I have another one because I've been researching homes, which I automatically just do the HRI form. So if and when we do an HRI update, and you know, when I have 15 of them, I just send them up to ship and go FYI, I've done these. Um, and I can list those with the museum too, if, if they want them. Um, so, you know, we can start with the museum. A lot of what they have has been on the HRI. The HRI is also on the GIS system for the town. So if you're looking at like, I just researched um, that property on Sasco Hill Road, the big subdivision. When you go onto the GIS, you can click on just the significance and it tells you what the significance was on the HRI form. So there's so many applications for the HRI. It's just, there's no downside. It places no restrictions. It does nothing to property values. It's just a survey for the benefit of the town. It's the town's not paying for it. The most that we need the town to do is kind of get, we need to get on the select woman's agenda and they need to approve a certified resolution that goes into the application it's and and that's even like a boilerplate thing right and i can write the application it's like two seconds <laughs> great that's great easy. idea <laughs> what's the prerequisite for being a historic resource in 30 words um the town and the consultant has to deem your property significant in the development of the town as being an indicator of the growth of the town, the community, or just a really significant resource because the architecture is very stylistically datable to a particular period, time, or place, or maybe it was by a known architect. So, like in Westport, Charles Cutler stuff is HRI worthy because he was a local architect. Here it might be um, Taylor and Arms things, or um, Clark. Mm -hmm. What's what's his name? Um, yeah, I can't think of his name now. Yeah, his Agnes Clark was his wife. Agnes L. Clark's wife was his wife, and she did all the landscaping. She was super notable. I'm thinking of Cameron. You're thinking of Cameron. Thank Clark. you, Cameron Clark. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, George Cameron Clark. Clark. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> distant relation. So, um, you know, so it, ha it I kind of think of it by national register standards. So it has to be notable architecture, notable personage, notable for a particular social situation or period of time where something socially really significant happened or community development. That's kind of how I look at it. So. You can make the argument for almost anything, maybe not McMansions, but you can make the argument for nearly anything. Right here on the station street, right. I think of Albert, Albert Hadley's house that we discussed today. Well, that's already in a district. I mean, I don't know if that one has an HRI. Um, I you know, one of the things that one of these HRIs might want to focus on is updating all the HRIs for things in a district. And then when something comes before us, 
we can look at the HRI and go, okay, well, in 1992, this is what the house was in 2022. I actually had to look at the date there for a second. 2022, this is what the house was. And when that comes before us in 2030, we can look at that development and see if we're actually doing our job, maintaining the integrity of these districts. Also on Station Street, the Sturm Ruger property. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Ruger in 1949, Yes. Yeah. Started a company. Mm -hmm. Heated with a Franklin stove yep. that became the largest firearm manufacturer in this country. Mm -hmm. And his son lived in town until fairly, you know, not too long ago, too. On, on he last took on Colts and he won. It's an extraordinary story. Yeah. So, I mean, all these things are okay. potentials for HRIs. We just need to do several of them to get them all in because they're only 150 forms per. Per town? No, per per HRI. So it's 150 forms plus 20 to 25 pages about development of the town. And then very often there's also a list of recommenda recommendations for potential national registers, um, state registers, and or local districts. Just for our edification if anybody ever tries to seek that kind of thing. Thank you. Sure. Great. So if you guys right. are good, I can write that application and present it to you for the next meeting if you want. Yeah, awesome. They're not long. They're not hard. That'd be great. Cool. Thank you. Sure. That's okay. my thing. <laughs> I think uh, that's all we have tonight. So um, someone wants yeah, to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'll second that. <laughs> Absolutely second. All right. All right. All in favor? George? <laughs> George is, I George mute. Is... I was muted. <laughs> the right. wrong the wrong time. Sorry about that, guys. All right. All right. All Good favor, night, Adam. To adjourn. Thank you very much. Good night, George. Good night, sir. <laughs>